was here a couple of weeks ago, and thank you. And during the offering, if you remember, Brother Rodriguez had made some comments, and I was provoked. Not at him. I was provoked to get up and make some statements. And since I made those statements, those statements have continued to speak to me every day. Now, there's been several scriptures added to, but it's like I am meditating upon these principles but it's not like it's my idea. It's not like I'm pursuing, hey, I got an idea. I'm going to look up and find and I'm just listening. <clears throat> I'm listening. And that daily manna that just keeps coming and feeding me. <clears throat> I've sat down four times now and started a set of notes. I mean, I, I sat down and I started one set and then I left it and I came back and I, I started another set similar and then I left that and then I, I've come back and I think maybe I should add them all together. And then, no, then I started pulling some from that and starting another set. I can't make up my mind or maybe I just haven't felt the sure direction on where to go or what piece when but I did get a piece this morning that's legible that I can use and I want to speak to you from oh I didn't even put the book I think it's Matthew 25 at verse 14 Let's bring that up and see what that says. Matthew 25 and 14. Do I look up? Let's go. Yep, that's it. Okay. I want to talk to you about stewardship. And I might talk to you about giving and about tithing. We'll see how far this gets. Stewardship. For the kingdom of heaven, or this is God's way. This is how God sees it. The kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Unto one he gave five talents. Now that's not the ability to play the piano. This was measures of silver. But he gave to one man five talents, to another two and to another one. And to every man according to his several ability. And straightway he took his journey. <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven is likened unto. The Lord is wanting to reveal to us his kingdom. The way he thinks. His ways are higher than our ways, but he can help us. Verse 16, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same. I don't think the New York Stock Exchange was there yet, but... <clears throat> There was some way for this servant to take those five talents and go and trade with them in some fashion. And made them other 
five talents. Doubled his money. Got me? Got any entrepreneurs in the house? You don't want 10%. You don't want to make 20%. No, you want to double your money or triple, 3X, 5X. Well, they doubled their money. He doubled his money. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and put his Lord's money in a non-interest bearing savings account. Did he not? He took the money and put it into a non-interest bearing savings account. Keep it safe. The bank. The illusion of safety. Now, how many thinks that was the smart thing to do? I mean, you don't want to lose it. And if you risk, there's a chance you could lose it. Well, he didn't do that, he put it in safekeeping. Because he was afraid. But wait a minute. We give our kids a... I never got more than 25 cents, but... An, uh, an allowance. We give them an allowance. Anybody get an allowance here? Nice. Nice. We got an allowance, 25 cents a week. And then we went out and worked hard for my dad for another 35 cents. And then he let us save that money and pay half for a $50 bicycle. Do you know how long that took? All summer long. You'd have thought we'd have taken care of those bicycles better than we did. But we did not. One talent, I just did a little search, and there's many <laughs> descriptions. <laughs> but the one I found said it was equal to 6,000 denarii, a silver coin weighing 38 kilograms that would today equal $28,000. One talent. Verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh. And reckoned with them. Can I give a word of wisdom to all the younger faces that I see sitting in here? Remember this and don't ever forget it. to hear it anyway. I can tell by the smiles on your faces. Live on less than you make. Start saving now. Okay? Start saving now. Become a saver. If you get a dollar, give your tithes, 10 cents. Put half of it away. Because if you got a grandma and grandpa around, they will pick up the tab most all times. <laughs> Save all that money you get, and it'll add up before you know it. Yeah. 
See, we are known as the American consumer. We consume it all. The idea of living paycheck to paycheck is consuming it all. Now, if you're raising a handful of kids, it takes every dime. I know that. And sometimes you wonder where you can get one more dime. And I can remember the years when it didn't seem like we were going to make it to the next year. And I don't know how. Next year came. We were still around. I mean, we weren't, we weren't arrested. We weren't in jail for not paying our bills or anything. And then the next year would come and you'd think, what are we going to make this? What do we do? What does God expect of us? And the next year would roll around and they just keep rolling. I'm 66 years old. They, can, they were rolling when I was 20, 22, 25. I don't know, man, but the Lord. <clears throat> We're talking about uh, the Lord uses this reference to share kingdom principles and let us to know how he see things. He's talking about money. He's talking about goods. And he's talking about stewardship and the management of not even their own, but another man's. But he that had one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You know, it doesn't give the time span of how long the Lord was away that had given to these servants. But I know that history is important. Developing history. In other words, you can be faithful in a week. Or you can be faithful over a month. Or you can be faithful and let it become a way of life yeah. year in and year out and year in and year out. And you don't even do it with your eyes on it as though uh, I'm being faithful. I'm being faithful. I, no, 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 no. It becomes a, a way of living. And then if you're like me, you leave the arena of being selfish because you marry somebody who is a giver. I used to tell her, you're giving away your farm. We didn't have a farm. Her family just gave everything and she just, well, I just joined right in with her. And now I've kind of leveraged it a little harder. Now she's saying, whoa, whoa. Man, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for that change that came into my life. You know, if you are, if you are raised with, let me say, if you grow up around, let's say it that way. If you grow up around people that seem to be all about themselves and me, 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 you pick up the same habits. You know, and if you, and if you got seven people at the table at dinner time, uh, you know, while they're praying, you're reaching. Because <laughs> there might be only five rolls on the plate. And it becomes a way of life. 
survival of the fittest. I thank God that really the Lord brought me to my wife and watching her, observing her, I thought, wow, I would rather be like that because she seems happy. I'm miserable trying to keep it all and she's happy trying to give it away. (laughs) Well, I want to be happy. That's, I didn't type that down here. Twenty-three. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. This is the second guy. He had two talents, and he gained two more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. See, it wasn't like, you know, one special individual, God is blessing them and he ain't blessing nobody else. No, no, he says, here's the principle here. Whatever it is that I put in your hand, if you are, whether it's five or two or one, it really doesn't matter because little is little and a few is a few. And if you'll just be faithful for whatever it is that I put in your hand in time, I'm going to make you a ruler over many. I'm going to change the dynamic. It's not that you're going to learn how to do it better and better and better and better. I will be the author of it. Do me a favor. Would you just take a minute? I want you just to stand up. And I want you to just thank the Lord for the blessing that he is going to bless you with. He's going to do it. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Come on. This is real prosperity doctrine. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm contented to be faithful over one, two, three things. <clears throat> hallelujah, hallelujah. By the working of your hand, your mighty hand. I'm thankful to you, Jesus. I'm thankful. <laughs> now listen to me. The expectation that God has with you over the few things. He will expect you to exercise the same stewardship over the many. It really becomes greater responsibility. You know, it's a lot easier to be faithful in ties over ten dollars. Then it is $10 million. Because it affects the psyche. It affects the psyche. Prove it. Prove it in the few. Prove it in the small. Please be seated. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord... I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed, and I was afraid. Fear or faith, what's it going to be? You decide. Fear or faith, which way is it going to go? I think fear repels God. I think faith draws him. That's not in the Bible. That's just me talking. Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. He is displeased. 
He just told us how displeased he was. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't finish reading that guy. Verse 25. I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast. That is thine. Here you go. His Lord answered and said unto him, I'm disappointed in you. <laughs> Wait a minute. He did the safe thing. He wanted to make sure he wasn't going to lose it. He'd be able to give it back, so he just went and stuck it in a savings account. And the Lord said, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather where I had not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money. See, now we know exactly what he's talking about. Money. Put my money to the exchangers. That was the least. That was the bare minimum. At least put it in an interest-bearing savings account. Sorry for all these bankers. But, but, uh, but do you hear God? Do you see his thought process and his mind? You could have doubled that. And let me add this. With my blessing, it would have been easy. But you went and you hid it. You could have at least, do you catch that? You could have at least. I mean, I see the Lord smirking at him. You could have at least put it in an interest bearing savings account and got some let me see what does it say usury I should have received mine own with usury interest at the bare minimum you should have put I already said that James 4 and 3 you ask receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts we're talking about lifestyle. Am I going to be a consumer and consume all? Wait a minute. Does God really care? Well, I didn't write this. Does he? I mean, I mean that's my money. I paid my tithes. Ten percent's his. Ninety's mine. No, that's Old Testament. New Testament, it's all his. And he expects you to steward over all of it. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. I thought we were supposed to disperse things evenly and, you know, let, you know, let everybody break in, steal everything in the grocery stores because they don't get what you get. Isn't that what the voice is saying? No, let them. Go ahead. Wait, call the cops. No, don't call them. What kind of a spirit is that? Well, it ain't God's. Okay. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. My exercising of stewardship will assure me that I will have and I will have abundance according to the word of the Lord. It's only a time factor. Verse 30, I almost don't want to read it. 
somebody else. paycheck. Stay out of my business. You mean, you mean he really cares this much? Is this affecting your perspective? Next time that check passes in front of your eyes, 